good morning everyone uh, my name is kranti kiran vistakula i am the ceo and uh, founder of a company called dama innovations uh, so i will divide my talk uh, in three sections so one will be my thought process how did i come out with innovation and uh, what are the key things that an innovator need to have the second will play a small video where we'll show uh, see all my jackets and all my products and how they work what is the technology behind and then we'll leave with uh, some thoughts what need what an innovator needs to have so i have titled my talk as earn learn to innovate what is what do we need to earn learn to innovate uh, when i say square tires what do you guys feel so i'm going to make square tires so what do you guys feel not possible he's stupid he's crazy why is he standing here the uh the reason why we are making square tires is because we have we assume there's friction but when there is no friction you can have square tires or tires of any shape the whole point behind is like once you put boundaries behind your thought you cannot think beyond those boundaries the first step for an innovation is you have to start thinking beyond boundaries and remove the limitations of your mind the education what we get what it specifically does it gives you boundaries in your thought saying that this is possible this is not possible when it when you think it this is not possible you are putting boundaries behind your thought light is such a simple simple thing but there are many many applications of light like we use it in cameras we use it as a periscope we diffract refract light but before these devices came into existence there is only light and people there was uh, these devices did not exist in the book people thought beyond and said how i can use this light for many different applications so you have to start thinking the obvious then only you will innovate one of the key inspiration for my innovation or whatever it is is from nature i love to learn from nature nature has been there for 3.5 billion years it has so many innovations nature never takes no for an answer it always finds a solution it adapts it innovates it constantly sustains we talk about sustainability we talk about innovation we talk about waste management everything nature has been doing it for 3.5 billion years and there is so much we can learn from nature i have learned so much from nature and i have applied them in creating my jackets and my technology uh for example the tires that don't go flat they are based on the uh, honeycomb web structure and uh, uh swim suits that were used in olympics were designed by sharks when we think of sharks we only think that they are human eating people or like uh, they are killing machines but actually the number of people dying from shark attacks is less than the number of people dying of a coconut falling on a head so <laughs> the number is very small they are very very intelligent animals they are so intelligent uh, that they can sense a single drop of blood in 1 million liters of water and they have so much sensory mechanism that a human cannot match or any sensory system that is there cannot match the performance of a shark and we have like uh, velcro has become a common uh, substance or common uh, daily usable item but this was invented a guy who was walking in his fields and so he got something stuck to his pants and stuff then he thought how can i use it then the velcro came but what most people do when they have something sticking to their pants when they go into the fields they feel oh this is very annoying i need to take this off throw it and just walk away but when you start thinking beyond the obvious you will get ideas and innovations so we indians are very innovative people are like the most smartest people on the planet our brain is so highly evolved but we lack one thing which is uh, teamwork i'll give you a couple of examples of how we lack teamwork so in a setting of a house we clean our house we throw our dust uh, the clean dust right outside the house i mean what's the point it's going to come back in so we keep our house clean but forget that why throwing the dust outside is going to come back in or it's going to destroy the uh, surrounding so we need to start working as a team another example i would like to give is like i think most people have taken flights right so whenever a flight uh, lands you see everyone standing up and rushing to the door i mean what's the point why are you rushing towards the door uh because everyone standing up you want to rush towards the door so that you want to get first or you, the aim of your uh, getting up should be such a way that i want to be first or optimize my time rather than thinking that everyone stands up as the flight lands and like rushes towards the door forgetting that there's a bus waiting outside you have to sit in the bus wait until the complete bus loads up and go to and there's luggage you have to wait for your luggage 
So what is the point for all rushing out? So we have to start thinking as a unit. And ants do it, and a lot of, you learn a lot of these kind of examples from nature, where we have to learn from uh, collaboration and teamwork. As an Indian, our intelligence is very high. But as a group of Indians, our intelligence will become very low. And that's how US and all these countries are succeeding. The individual intelligence level in the US is smaller, but the group intelligence becomes much more higher. So we have to start developing much more group intelligence to innovate because, and to succeed because an innovation is not a single person's idea. It's a teamwork effort. When a team from all different aspects of life come together, it basically makes an innovation successful. And you can see examples like Wikipedia and all, all sort of examples where collective teamwork has become so successful. Uh, probably I'll just play your video uh, showing my work and my technology. Uh, before that, I'll also share uh, one of my other innovations where uh, how I learn from nature. We, uh, how do we feel touch? Like when I'm touch, uh, when I speak, how are you able to hear it? Uh, this is a transducer. There are many transducers like touch, hearing, and these transducers are micro nanoscale motors which convert the mechanical energy or the sound energy into electrical energy that is then transmitted to your brain. So then what I did was, why can't we take these proteins and convert to, uh, them into uh, devices which can harness energy? Let's say for this example, I coat this building completely with this protein like from different animals and different uh, uh, humans and stuff. Then the vibration, the air, the sunlight, the speech can all be converted to electrical energy. We successfully demonstrated that with NASA uh, for one protein called Prestin. Prestin is a protein that is present in your ear. That's how you are able to hear because this protein is actually vibrating at the frequency of what I'm speaking. And this protein doesn't require ATP or any energy to vibrate. It's directly transducing that energy of uh, my mechanical energy or the vibrational energy which I'm speaking is converted into electrical energy. So if you have a plethora of these nano devices, you can harness energy everywhere. So maybe that's the future, how we can learn from nature and harness energy. And nature does it all the time. Uh, we'll just play a small video. It's not as small, it's like five minutes. So you can see my jackets and uh, later I'll speak something about it. This is Climacon, climate control for the body. It's a high tech jacket that maintains a constant core body temperature for its wearer in both hot and cold environments. Its aim is to enhance comfort and increase mental and physical productivity, whatever the weather. My philosophy and motivation are to learn from nature and bring them to everyday life to increase the comfort of human life. The inspiration for Climacon didn't come to Cranthy from his hot local streets, but nearly 13,000 kilometers away in the USA, where he is studying one chilly winter. He constantly had to wrap up for the cold outdoors, only to strip down again for the warmer indoors. Being a lazy person, I always used to find very hard to remove all these layers. Then at that point of I thought, why can't there be a jacket which can keep me comfortable in any conditions, so that I can bring temperature control into my hands. Much to the amusement of his friends, Panthe's first design, weighing a hefty five kilograms, was packed full of motorized fans and electric wiring. My colleagues thought about my original prototype as cumbersome and uh, they thought that I was wearing a bomb. It just wasn't a practical solution. So Cranthy set to work on making a lighter, more wearable jacket without the fan and the fuss. My final solution was a lightweight jacket which weighs 650 grams and you can control the temperature anywhere from 18 degrees to 40 degrees centigrade inside the jacket and it can work in ambient temperatures of minus 50 to plus 50 degrees centigrade. So, how did Cranthy make his breakthrough? Climacon makes novel use of a thermoelectric effect first discovered by Frenchman Jean-Charles Peltier in the 1830s. The Peltier effect occurs when an electric current is forced through the point at which two different metals meet. This causes the metal on one side to heat up and the metal on the other to cool down. Switching the current reverses the effect. Thermal imaging equipment demonstrates this occurring right in front of our eyes. Heat builds up on one side, while on the other, heat is dispersed. In the Climacon jacket, these metal Peltier elements are hidden within 20 ceramic plates sewn into its fabric. 
we have basically selected multiple points in the human body a couple of points in the back of your body where there is large muscle group and less fat and we have selected other points close to the blood vessels so that the incoming blood can dissipate heat to the peltiers. Again, depending on which direction the electrical current is switched to flow through them, the peltier plates pump heat towards the body or pump it away, creating a cooling effect. Hot and cold in one garment. That's all fine in theory, but Cranthy soon ran into a problem. The peltier effect it by itself can do both heating and cooling. But when it comes to the cool, cooling the human body, you have to remove the heat from the human body and dissipate it out. So that is when uh, the Peltier fails its function because you don't have a very efficient heat sink. A heat sink is a device which dissipates heat into the atmosphere. Air conditioners contain them. The Peltier plate is a heat sink too, but only works for short periods. We have overcome that uh, limitation of a Peltier by designing a very novel heat sink. Which, can, which is very lightweight and which can remove heat very effectively. Franthi's improved heat sink prolongs the cooling function of the Peltier plate by converting heat into chemical energy. An aluminium mesh is added to one side of the plate. This is then coated with hydrogen bonds, which, when broken down, dissipate heat for longer periods. Finally, advanced fabrics in the jacket enhance the technology's heating and cooling effects. The different materials what we have chosen is because they have to be very skin friendly and they have to be easily available because the point of an invention is to bring it to the common man. You can control the temperature by a touch display where you have four levels of heating or four levels of cooling. So you can st start heating or cooling depending on the need by flicking a but button which reverses the polarity of the current. But does the technology work in the real world? Practical everyday proof, Cranfee tested it out first on his top local streets. The thermal imaging camera shows that without wearing Climacon, the runner's skin temperature is indeed very high, almost 46 degrees Celsius. But with a Climacon vest on and another run in the same environmental conditions, it's a much more comfortable 36 degrees. As well as the jacket, Climacon technology is incorporated into neck scarves, sports injury bandages and even footwear to enhance everyday comfort. But it's not just about comfort. Cranthy believes the technology will help increase our productivity too. But the productivity of a human being depends upon the temperature which he is in working in. If the temperature is comfortable, the productivity is very high. And even if there is a small change of 5 degrees centigrade in the work temperature, your productivity drops by 50%. And it's not only humans that Climacon may make more productive. Cranthy is even developing a jacket for cows to maintain their milk productivity during hot summer months. And he's hoping it will change what we wear forever. Clothing was the first invention of the mankind. We have been wearing clothing forever, but the clothing functionality has never changed. So Climacon, I think, will be the next revolution in clothing. So my first jacket was around 2003, right after 9-11. So I used to sit in MIT classrooms in Boston. So I used to walk all around the campus and people used to think like, he's going, going to blow up the class someday. <laughs> so I even carried my jacket through airports. So they always used to ask me, are you not carrying a bomb? <laughs> so then uh, after this innovation, we thought, why can't this innovation be used in many applications? Uh, we looked at fields where as, uh, how can we increase milk productivity for cows? Because cows yield more milk in winter than summer. Because if they are kept comfortable, they yield more milk. So then we applied it for medical products. Then we applied the same technology for, like, uh, right now we are serving banquet uh, dinners using our dinner plates that we have devised for ITC. So we have spread out the application. So the basic thought in what we do is basically we don't limit our thought saying that I have developed this for one application. Why can't I use it for many applications? So we have scaled down to many different applications. But that being said, we had to face a lot of challenges because this didn't come to me overnight. So first I was in Boston, I was making my first jacket which was five kilos and everyone thought like this is an impossible thing to do because heat dissipation is a very constant problem. So I went to a professor at MIT, he basically told me that this is not possible. This is thermodynamically not possible. But I didn't get disheartened by that. Because the day you decide that I cannot do it or this is not possible, then it will be never possible. You should at least give a try. 
So once I tried, the biggest challenge is like, how do I build a team? How do I transform my vision to different amount of people, right? So in uh, these kind of days, like all these big companies are paying like 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs, 50 lakhs, 70 lakhs to all these very smart talent people. How do I get all these people to work and believe my vision? So that was a very difficult challenge to retain the team and get people into the team because I, one person was doing something which was nice, cool, but whether will it be successful, whether what is the vision that needs to be transferred. So I had to overcome that big challenge of retaining a very small team or retaining the people for a longer time. So these were the challenges. And one of the biggest challenges was funding. Like how do I convince people that they put their money into this so that they can make more money later. Uh, one of our in, uh, best way of raising funding was we won awards and a lot of competitions. We raised approximately around uh, 50 lakhs worth of rupees through winning competitions. And the second source of funding was we went to the government. Uh, we have a common feeling that in government things move very slow, things don't happen very slow. I got a funding for almost uh, one crore rupees in three days from Indian government. They gave me a sanction letter in three days. All I did was, I was sitting there, I want it done now, I'm not going to stand up here and get it done. So I moved the file from my own hand, to from table to table, because it was my innovation and I want to support it. So I moved the file from one table to other. But I felt very happy after getting the sanction letter in three days and money in like one month. So that was able to sustain us for many, uh, like almost a year. Then we got VC funding and like there are so many challenges. But there are many examples that make me as a person today, which I would have not been if I had done a job or like uh, was working for someone. So I value this experience. Uh, that being said, we also won many awards. Like I was the innovator of the year from MIT, then uh, last year, then entrepreneur of the year last year. Then uh, a lot of awards from uh, Lockheed Martin and like funding from the government. So, so what should be the key for innovation, right? It should be like, the first thing, you have to start thinking beyond boundaries and existing connections. If it's very obvious, then it might not be the right thing to do. You have to do something different. That's where the innovation starts for. And you have to be very persistent. Persistence, persistent. There are hundreds of people that told me this is not possible. You cannot get money from the government. You have to give a lot of bribes. You have to do a lot of stuff. But I said, no, I want to get it done. The persistence is something. And impact. If you have one iteration fails, like Edison, Edison failed like 500 times inventing a light bulb. Or there are hundreds of examples like that when people persisted on something they like. Even if you fail, the amount of learning you get by doing that is tremendous, which will help you in your future life. And one thing we say is like, never say your idea is of your own. It's your groups. You have to develop a group synergy and work as a group because an idea or any innovation will not be successful until you work as a group because you only have certain skills and certain strengths and weaknesses. You have to have other people supporting that. So with this, I conclude my talk. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.